Hello and welcome again to another short video from investingsuccess.ca. In this video today, uh, January 3rd, 2023, I want to talk a little bit further about the concept of the McWhorter cycle. I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you have already taken the time to watch the previous one where I went into um, considerable detail on the McWhorter cycle. But in case you haven't, I'm just going to very quickly um, show you a couple things here. Here we go. The McWhorter cycle um, really centers around the concept of the North Node. And in the cosmos, the Earth moves around the Sun in a path or a plane of motion called the ecliptic plane. Meanwhile, the moon is moving around the Earth, and it is confined to its path of motion, or its lunar ecliptic. So really, mathematically, what you have are two planes that are not parallel. Therefore, they must intersect at two points. Those points are termed the North and the South Node. They're always opposite to one another in the uh, zodiac wheel. And so to make things simple, Astrologers typically focus on only one of them, and the one that they pick is the North Node. You can see here that currently today, January 3rd, it is at 10 degrees of Taurus. Come back and talk to me in about 18 and a half years from now, and it will be again at 10 degrees of Taurus. So that whole 18 and a half year period of time is what Louise McWhorter deemed to be one of her so-called McWhorter cycles. And just to make uh, one thing very clear, which I think I overlooked in the previous video, in any zodiac wheel that you're looking at, the planets are going to move in a counterclockwise um, rotation around the signs of the zodiac. The node will move opposite. It moves retrograde. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're when you're studying. Uh, the zodiac wheel and the nodes. Now let's take a look at our Optima screen here. So in the last video, I said that right on the cusp of the 1987 stock market crash, the node was about to enter the sign of Pisces. Um, anytime you see that happening in the context of the McWhorter 18 and a half year cycle, time to pay attention. And sure enough, the smart money got out of the way. Um, people who were otherwise unaware of what was going on, they got hit and hit very hard. Now, luckily, the, the markets recovered um, after that because we were starting a new McWhorter cycle. And to help matters along, we had Jupiter, the positive, expansive planet uh, in the sign of Gemini. And that's one of the things that McWhorter uh, focused on very intently. Um, and so you can see here in 1989, um, the node is moving into Aquarius. And really, McWhorter said when the node is moving into Aquarius, that pretty much tells you that the economy um, has hit bottom. And I think the markets had already been telling you that the economy had hit bottom. And Jupiter in Gemini was telling you that there was positive times ahead. And the economy did very well, and interest rates were, were gradually coming down. Money was finding its way into the equity markets, and they kept rising and rising and rising and rising until uh, 1998. Now, what happened in 98? Well, we had the Asian currency crisis um, in 97. And that spilled over into, uh, you may or may not remember, there was a hedge fund in New York called Long-Term Capital Management. And it was run by some reportedly smart people, uh, Nobel Prize laureates nonetheless. And if you uh, just do a, do a Google search in your spare time on Long-Term Capital Management, um, Financial Crisis 1998, you'll see the names of these people. Uh, they got they got snarled up in purchasing um, some debt instruments in Russia. Uh, these things very quickly went all to shit. 
And it took Alan Greenspan, chairman of the Federal Reserve, to step in uh, and settle things down because had he not, uh, things were going to get pretty ugly pretty fast. And I can recall um, in my early days, starting in 2002 as a young stockbroker, I can recall listening to some of the old pros talk, and they, they, they told me stories about the day of long-term capital management and how literally they were in their office looking at their computer screen, and they were not seeing any bid for a good number of stocks. I mean, the, the financial instruments, the, the financial system, uh, the wheels were, were about to fall off the wagon. And luckily, Mr. Greenspan stepped in and, and saved the day. Um, what else was going on that, that uh, contributed to this? Well, you had Pluto square to the North Node. So again, there's McWhorter saying, watch out for these outer planets when they make these hard, bloody aspects. Uh, things can go a little stupid. Um, markets recovered, obviously, uh, thanks to Mr. Greenspan. But coming into uh, early part of 2000, they hit a peak. Why? Well, um, as we're going to talk about in another video, um, that's the end. That was the end of a GAN master cycle. Uh, Jupiter and Saturn had hit zero degree conjunction. And a lot of times these GAN cycles don't wait until the exact conjunction. And uh, this is a, a case where, you know, several months before the actual zero degree uh, aspect, the markets hit a peak. And so with that, uh, you're into a new GAN cycle. Um, but the McWhorter cycle is still ongoing and markets chop around very violently. And Saturn comes into Gemini in May of 2001. Now, the one thing that I have not mentioned about Saturn and Gemini is um, when either Saturn or Uranus move through Gemini, there is a propensity, if you look back in history, for the United States of America to have some sort of a violent conflict. And if you go back to uh, World War II, you'll see that one of these planets was in Gemini. And if you back up, uh, you'll see something similar around about the U.S. Civil War. And it, it actually is frightening to see um, when these planets move through Gemini, the, the problems that they can cause. So May of 2001, everybody is otherwise happy, happy, happy. Life is good. Yeah, the markets are, are volatile, um, but, but life is good until it's not. September 11th, 2001, terrorist attacks on sovereign soil. The World Trade Center, uh, both towers are taken out by Islamic terrorists. Saturn and Gemini gave you a heads up that something was about to go wrong, and it did. So anytime you see Saturn and Gemini, and I mean, this is only going to happen once in every you know 30 or so years, um, be very careful. So be very careful in particular in, um, in about seven years from now, because it's going to repeat and uh, things could get a little special in about seven years' time. So markets obviously were hit hard with the events of 9-11, recovered. Um, but then, you know, you've still got Saturn and Gemini. And what did the United States do? They went to war. They went to war. They, they literally bombarded the shit out of Baghdad, and then uh, started to turn their focus on onto Afghanistan, typical for Saturn in Gemini. Um, McWhorter cycle, however, is still ongoing. So the markets uh, continue climbing. Um, but then in October, uh, September, October of 06, we had the node going into Pisces. I was still a stockbroker at the time, and all we heard about was how people had been essentially um, refinancing their mortgages and using their houses as a glorified ATM machine for refinancing and getting their hands on cash. Um, house prices were rising 
And it was getting to the point where if you, uh, you could exhale and, and fog up a mirror and if you had a pulse, you could get a mortgage. Something was not quite right. Um, we just couldn't quite put our, our finger on what was going on, but we just knew that something was amiss with that uh, U.S. housing market. Um, North Node uh, gets to four of Pisces in uh, the spring of 07. So now the Mark Order cycle is telling you, um, you know, from here you're going into Aquarius. So that there's something, something is going to fall off the, the rails here. The, the wheels are getting wobbly on the wagon. Um, but a lot of people paid no heed to it until it was too late. And uh, finally, um, the node moved into Aquarius. The markets peaked. Uh, the subprime mortgage situation unraveled very quickly, and you had uh, you had Lehman Brothers, um, Bear Stearns. You you know the story, and the the entire financial system again uh, came under duress. Um, it, it it was close to collapse, but. Thanks to uh, government bailouts, there was the TARP plan and, and I, I forget what all else they had, but it, there was massive bailouts. And early in uh, 2009, the markets breathed a sigh of relief. They realized that, yeah, the government's got our back and the government is going to, uh, to bail everything out. And at that point, um, in about June, uh, April, May, June of, of 2009, uh, you had the node almost working its way through the sign of Aquarius. So the McWhorter cycle in early 09 was telling you the economy had bottomed. And we were getting um, teed up then for the beginning of another McWhorter cycle. So if you follow these McWhorter cycles, uh, paying close attention to when the node moves into uh, Pisces and then into Aquarius, um, you can save yourself a lot of grief and uh, it might mean sitting on the sidelines for a while, but if you make that choice, you can avoid a lot of headaches and uh, you can then move back in once the, the economy has made its bottom. So thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. And I'm gonna be posting another one of these videos here very shortly, uh, showing you the current status of the McWhorter cycle and where we are at. And uh, then we'll, we'll turn our attention to the, uh, to a discussion of the GAN master cycles. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you kindly and have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day.